we're going to talk about the uh, about the safe sport um, rules and requirements that are in place now and moving forward, specifically what they mean for uh, youth nationals or the youth national regatta that's coming up right now. And uh, Pamela Adler, our uh, director of a lot of things, including safe sport, um, is going to be uh, talking about that. And then at the end, there will be a time uh, to do a Q&A if you have specific questions about uh, things that you want to do. So Pamela, take it away. Okay, so um, welcome to the US Rowing Safe Sport Map webinar. Um, we're here because a lot of questions have come up and we want to do what we can to help you. Um, and so we'll just begin as to why does this even exist? So um, Safe Sport was um, created by an act in 2017 by Congress, and it was signed in um, by Donald Trump in 2018. And as you could see here in what they say, um, they're an independent national safe sport organization with the responsibility to develop national policies and procedures to prevent emotional, physical, and sexual misconduct of amateur athletes. Um, they have the exclusive authority to respond to allegations of sexual abuse and sexual misconduct within the US Olympic and Paralympic movement and US rowing falls under that movement. So basically the center has the discretionary jurisdiction to um, look at all of the claims and cases that come in involving misconduct. And we as a national governing body under the Paralympic and Olympic movement must follow that. Um, so I've created a few slides here for you um, that basically explain what safe sport and the map, which is the minor athlete abuse prevention policy is all about. Um, there's kind of two parts to what safe sport is. There's the minor athlete abuse prevention policy is basically what to do to prevent misconduct in any form. And then the safe sport code, which is well, what do you do if something happens? And we really don't wanna get there, which is why training is so important. So these, this slide and the next two slides give a brief overview of what the minor athlete abuse prevention policy is. And instead of um, taking the time right now to read through them, these are available on the US Rowing website under safe sport, under um, within that area, the safe sport map resources. Um, I think what's most important to many of you is how do we get to the training? Pamela, perhaps there's one of the map items that we want to touch on real quick. If you want to go back, because I got a couple of calls about this. Uh, some of you who went through this um, on the second page had a question about what if uh, an athlete is legally an adult um, and you have made room um, room uh, bookings hotel. and hotel uh, uh, hotel bookings that include perhaps an 18 year old athlete rooming with a 17 year old or 16 year old athlete. That's actually not an issue under the policy as written, but you would need uh, written approval from the parent or the guardian of the minor um, in order for that to be allowed. So some of you had reached out to us and said, hey, uh, I already made all these arrangements and I have 17 year olds in a room with 18 year olds. I now realize that that might be an issue according to Safe Sport. It's not an issue as long as the parent of the, 18, of the 17 or 16 year old, at least the, the minor, as long as their parent consents to it. Um, and you can get that in writing. That can be an email, that can be a text. As long as you have it in writing, um, you're good to go on that. You don't have to change who rooms with who based on whether or not some of your athletes have turned 18 or 19. Just make sure that you have some sort of written statement from a parent that says that you're good to go, that's all. Um, so a lot of you have asked how to access the training. The, safe, the US Center for Safe Sport recently changed their learning management system to their new system, which is called Safe Sport Trained. And so there are different login procedures. Um, basically, it depends on whether you had a safesport.org or athletesafety.org login in the past or not. And if you had it, 
There's one way to log in. And if you've never had it before, there's another way to log in. So I include this slide to kind of as a, what do you do? How do you get on? Um, this is also available on the website under the Safe Sport page. Um, but obviously you're welcome to email us if you want faster results or you can't find it or you just wanna to talk to me. And I also wanted to note that uh, if you had an account before and in the last year um, you took the main training or in the last year you were al actually eligible to take one of the much shorter refresher courses. And for those of you who don't know, if you take this for the first time, there is about a 90 minute training. Um, but uh, because of a lot of the feedback from people saying, well, why am I taking this long training all the time? I did this in the last 12 months. They've included refresher courses, refresher one, two, and three. Um, they become available to you once you complete the main course. And you just need to have either the main course or one of these three refreshers um, completed in the last 12 months in order to be compliant with safe sport requirements. Um, if you did the refresher course, if you did the longer course, um, the uh, uh, this is uh, uh, this this actually transferred for you. So the new system, even though it is a new learning management system, they moved over the content and your historic data that they had. So you should be able to see what you completed in the past and what you were eligible for at this time. And for a lot of users that actually meant or turned out to mean that one of the shorter courses that are between really 20 to 30 minutes to complete at most, um, is, this, is the course that they can take. So uh, your historic data has moved to this new system if you had an account in the old one. So we know that there's a lot of questions and we put together what we thought were most of the frequently asked questions. I'm sure there's others and we could go through those um, additional questions in the end, but um, we thought we'd start with what, what many questions that we've received from our members to date. Um, the first question is who is an adult member? Basically, according to Congress, according to law, according to the Safe Sport um, Act, once you turn 18, you're an adult. And that means that you must take Safe Sport training specifically if you interact with minors. Um, so if you're an 18 year old athlete and you're in a boat with 17 or 16 year olds, you're an adult, you're interacting with minors. So you, that 18 year old must take the training. Um, but let's say you're about to turn 18 next month and you wanna get ahead of the game, you can take the training before you turn 18 as long as you have consent from your parent or guardian. Um, how is the training accessed? We discussed that previously, but it's here again for you just in case. The US Center for Safe Sport offers free training for minors. And um, we've received questions of, does that count towards the requirement? Unfortunately not. Adults must take the training called Safe Sport Trained. It's the core course. And as Jules mentioned, if you've already taken that training, then you just take a refresher course and that will take count towards your requirement. Um, in the past, the way the learning management system was set up, there was one code and pretty much everybody could use it. The center changed the way that you access the training. Now, each US rowing adult member must log in with their own unique US rowing individual membership to access the training. For the first time that you're accessing a learning management system though, it includes that. In addition, there's that enrollment key. Um, how will US rowing adult member be able to show that they have completed the training? The US rowing membership database shows a, um, is it a check mark, Jules, or? Yeah, uh, if, if, the, if the person um, taking the training is a member of US Rowing and uses their member number and they are posted on your roster in the US Rowing member portal, you can actually go into the portal, look at the list of people who are active for your team. 
you can check the box with their name and click a button that says the move this person to be an applicable adult that keeps them on your active roster but it also moves them to a additional tab called applicable adults where once you click on that all the people that you've assigned you've assigned this status you can actually see what their um what their safe sport results and their status is has it expired if so when did it expire um and that will show with an orange triangle or a yellow triangle it will have a green check mark um that uh, uh that shows you that someone is good to go and then i think you can hover the mouse on it and you can actually see when it expires for that person to see if perhaps it doesn't expire before an upcoming regatta or something like that um, so you can see in the member portal for your coaches that are on your roster um for your uh for your athletes that are on the roster for staff it's very easy to check their status now because we just added that feature um a month ago is there a grace period to complete this training? Because as most of you know, youth, the youth uh, national regatta is coming up next week. So there is a 30 day grace period that um, began on May 27th. Um, and those members who are 17 who are about to turn 18 will have 30 days from their 18th birthday to complete the training. This grace period is specific to the youth national regatta. Um, and the only reason is because the U.S. Center for State Sport is coming to see us and it's a site visit. So they've allowed this grace period to us. Pamela, I have a good question in the chat. If you if you we have time for questions already. Um, um, sure. What is it? Because I'm on my full screen. I can't. <laughs> OK, perfect. Right I'll, I'll read them both to you. Okay. One is uh, and I can probably answer one of these. What is the bar that causes a parent to switch from a spectator to an applicable adult? And I think generally you have to think, is it a role in which they kind of on behalf of the team quite regularly interact with these minors? So if they are just there as a parent and they're cheering on the race and they're part of a larger group, I would say they remain parents and they're just spectators. If they are the people who are always doing the food, if they are chaperoning and driving one of the vans with the kids and they're more in a position like that, I think that's kind of where the bar um, is met that someone becomes an applicable adult. So if they're in some sort of role where their interaction with the minors is almost required, um, that's, that's more so one um, than, yeah, they're just a parent in the crowd and cheering. Uh, the other question, and Pamela, I think I know the answer here, but I'll, I'll give this one to you. Uh, someone saying, I have a double going to, to the Youth National Regatta. Both athletes are 18 and all the athletes and coaches are over 18. Do the athletes have to take safe sport? Yes, because they are over 18 and they are adults and they are going to a regatta that has minors that yes, they would have to take training. Gotcha. And, so all, of the, the and all of the coaches, it's beyond the team in this case, and all of the coaches um, would and any staff involved would have to take training. Um, that is a safe sport requirement, no matter who you are, if you're a coach or a staff member or a board member, um, safe sport training is required. And in this case, the two athletes would have to take training because they are going to be um, in contact with minors at okay. the regatta. And, and just for to for clarity, you know, the, this also goes if you're if someone's on and they have just a master's team, the coaches and board members and staff would still have to take the training, correct? Correct. And the reason that this is so important is because misconduct actually happens at every level, unfortunately. So it's not just minors that have misconduct issues, we'll say, but it happens at every level, unfortunately. So that is why um, coaches and staff member and board members, employees of an organization need to take the training. Great. Um, we've discussed this page of how will um, a member organization know whether their US Rowing adult members have completed training. Um, Jules answered that previously. Mm -hmm. um, is it expected that those U.S. rowing adults members with developmental delays or disabilities complete the training? Yes, the U.S. Center for Safe Sport offers special accommodations for these athletes. And if if you have an athlete or a member with one of these disabilities or delays, please contact me or contact the center, and we can arrange for the special accommodations. Um, is the training available for the hearing and vision impaired? Currently, there 
um, is closed captioned for the hearing impaired, impaired, sorry, I can't speak tonight, but there is not anything available right now for the vision impaired. And the center suggests that you have someone help you if you are vision impaired. Um, and they will provide whatever accommodations they can as needed. Um, this was also answered, but how often do I need to take the training? Safe sport must be completed annually. And um, once you've completed the core car course, there are refresher courses after that for the additional years. Do adult members need to have a background check screening to compete in a regatta? The answer to that is no. Um, However, if you are an adult, an applicable adult in the position of authority, then you would need to have a background screening check. And this would be employees, coaches, referees, volunteers, board members, staff, administrators, or any other non-athlete member that is part of your organization. Um, this one we've gotten a lot of questions about, especially with people walking around with their COVID uh, card but do I need to bring proof of my safe sport training to the regatta? I have received a lot of certificates in my e um, email inbox. Um, you do not have to bring proof because it will all be, sh it all shows up in the membership database and we can easily look up your name if need be. Um, as I mentioned, the US Center for Safe Sport will be at the Youth National Regatta and they may approach you and ask you questions. Basically, they're not gonna ask you anything crazy. They're gonna say, have you received communication from US rowing? Um, what do you know about the MAP, which is the minor athlete abuse prevention policy that we discussed? As a coach, what do I need to do prior to an event that the US Center for Safe Sport is auditing? You just need to make sure that you're safe sport trained And then there's, if you have any more questions, um, we can discuss now or feel free to email us. So um, let's see if there's any more questions in the chat that Jules hasn't. Uh... Nope. Nope, that's it. Yeah, um, I guess, I'm sorry. Do you mind if I ask a question out loud? Yeah, right? no, go yeah, ahead. for sure. Hey, Matt. Uh, hey guys. <laughs> um, so this applies to all U.S. rowing owned regattas or all regattas insured by U.S. rowing. I guess my question is looking ahead to fall racing where youth athletes and adult athletes are often competing at the same location. Are we going to be looking at the safe sport requirements for that as well? For the year 2021, we're going to concentrate on U.S. rowing owned regattas, but come 2022, the U.S. Center for Safe Sport will require this of every single regatta and every single mem every single applicable adult, no matter what. Um, the policy, the minor athlete abuse prevention policies actually will change in 2022. And it will now, it will become a requirement for all and that communication after youth nationals, that communication will go out. Thank you. I was, I was just trying to figure out fall racing, what I need to do with masters, that kind of thing. Appreciate it. Yeah, we'll have a lot more on that um, kind of in the coming months, uh, kind yes. of as the policy gets changed. A lot of NGBs, not just US rowing, have been going through a review of their map of you know their safe sport policy to requirements for its sanctioned event, its own events, its member organizations, et cetera. Um, and so as a sport, we're certainly not alone and it's the only sport currently going through this. This is you know, happening for a lot of different uh, sports and really for every NGB, like we said at the beginning, uh, the Center for Safe Sport was designated by Congress as the party to kind of do all of these uh, and for every sport. And so it's kind of changing as is, but we're, uh, we're gonna see a national effort across the Olympic movement to kind of align the policies and really what that means for 2022 will be kind of rolled out in the near future. Are there other questions? You guys can either hop from mute uh, and turn on your camera. Yeah, will we, uh, are you gonna provide the slide deck that was used in this I call? I certainly can, yes. Yep, we'll do the slide deck and we'll do a recording. 
we already are recording. Yep. <laughs> both, Hi, of Mom. Will be, both, <laughs> yeah. both of those will be posted. Great. Jules and Pamela, another sort of looking ahead to the fall question. For those of us who are in schools or other organizations that background check us annually or do a continuous background mm -hmm. check, is this going to be sort of similar to the question I emailed you about, Pamela, where that will not be acceptable and you'll have to be background checked through US rowing or will or will a background check from your organization suffice? The the background check from your organization is fine. The safe sport training needs to be safe sport training. For example, if you're with um, a school, I know that a lot of schools have their own um, safety training, but safe sport requires that you also do theirs. With the only caveat being that safe sport did speak to us about potentially reviewing if there are like statewide trainings, for example, and that they certainly recognize that this is one of those areas where they certainly don't want to make it onerous or at least not as, you know, as least onerous as they can. Um, and so uh, they have asked us and they have asked other sports. I happen to like, you know, they told us this to kind of give them examples of the kind of policies and the kind of training that is out there that come from like state scholastic organizations or that come, uh, you know, from, from the NCAA, et cetera, because they obviously, through the Olympic movement technically have jurisdiction over every sports club that's part of any of the Olympic NGBs, but they also recognize that even before they came into existence, there have been years of, you know, abuse policies and prevention policies that have been in place um, at high schools, at colleges, et cetera. Um, and so they definitely recognize that they don't want to necessarily make you double up or triple up on training um, and that's something that's kind of an ongoing conversation that we're having with them and just saying like, hey, we have a lot of schools, we have a lot of colleges who are already doing this, like they're, they're probably more strict than we are. What exactly are we going to ask them to go through at the coaching level, at least. Um, and so more on that again in the future, but the background check and I, I want to emphasize this is not necessarily does not have to go through the U.S. rowing partner. We just happen to have a partner for that. A lot of the NGBs do. But if you can get a background check from the state or something like that, a background check is a background check. And you, you should be all good to go on those. Thank you. And so ultimately, based on the grace period, if our athletes can't get the testing, can't get the certification done, they're fine because of the grace period, correct? Correct. For youth nationals, yes. All right, is there anyone else? I don't think so. No more no, questions, no more questions in the chat either. All right. Um, if anyone does have a question that comes up once we are finished with this call, feel free to email us um, and we're here to help. And also it's with the new learning management system and with the feature we have in the member portal to become a lot easier for you as trying to review um, the status of individuals to look people up for you real quick. Um, so if you either need assistance with the portal feature, or if you have a list of a couple of coaches that you want us to double check or some parents, uh, we can, you know, we can do that for you. We can assist with that, uh, kind of talk you through the features moving forward, but also, um, you know, if you have a specific question for your program or something like that, uh, we're happy to help uh, with those as well. So uh, feel free to reach out to us and, uh, you know, hopefully we can, uh, get your team all squared away before the Youth National Regatta. Great. Thanks, everybody. All right. Yeah, Bye. have a great night, everyone. Oh, someone raised Ooh, a hand. Say, thank you, Jules. <laughs> Wait, I saw a hand come up. I'm still here. Um, it's Meg Kennedy from the Mount. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Um, I literally just did this today, um, the training, mm -hmm. and... I nowhere did they ask me about like what sport I was, what governing body, like mm -hmm. uh, they'll magically know somehow that I'm connected to US rowing. Did you, was it the first time you did it and did you use the enrollment key? Um, I never got an enrollment key, so I don't know what that is. Um, okay. I, I had a call today. Apparently at some point I must have um, registered before because it okay. ha they had my email, but I couldn't get my password to reset. So I called today and they reset my password but okay 
Well, the, there, there are a couple of ways, like now that you have an account, if you look in the profile, it should say somewhere that you're connected with US Rowing or you can retroactively connect yourself to US Rowing um, and then actually use your member number uh, for additional kind of identification. So for most people, the enrollment key that we shared a little bit earlier, that's the actual specific enrollment key for US Rowing and it will prompt you to fill out a member number if you have one. So that's the way uh, we know it for the majority of people. If you had an old account from way back and it did not connect with us at the time, um, there is a chance that you may not be connected, but that doesn't mean we can't quickly connect it for you uh, with right. some of the instructions. Uh, but if you want to shoot me an email, I can take a look and if, if I see you connected to us or not, um, and then uh, we can, you know, we can go from there. So I can, I can look it up and, and assist you if it happens to not be connected. But okay. for most people, the enrollment key is the connection to us. Okay. I didn't, I didn't get the enrollment key until tonight. So gotcha. good that I didn't send this out to any of my kids yet, but now Perfect. that I have that, hopefully them, they'll be new and be able to get that connected easily. Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. And I'll, someone just asked for an enrollment key. I'll just, put it in the chat. I just put Give it me, in the chat, oh, Jules. Perfect. All right. Yep. Awesome. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. Anybody else? And just to be clear, there's uh, there's no difference between a U.S. Rowing Club organization and a high school, any of that. Because I know that how much I've I've taken some safe sports, some background check. You know, I was also an EMT. I mean, the list of child abuse stuff mm -hmm. I've taken is astronomical per year. Um, but all schools now it's bringing everything together and saying anyone working with minors is required going to be required this every year and then every race 2022 and on everyone's got to take safe sport regardless of club or school or whatever it is as of this moment the answer is yes but as we mentioned earlier we are in discussions with the u.s center for safe sport to say hey listen we know people that take all kinds of other trainings can we work out some sort of arrangement so that they're not duplicating we don't have the answer back from the center yet, but we're hoping for um, good news. Okay, so basically we everyone for, we can't say. yeah, so basically everyone for Sarasota, if you're over 18, no mm -hmm. matter what, you got to take it. And Correct. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Okay. Well, if there's not anyone else, have a great night, guys. Thank you for joining us.